Welcome to Catskills Commerce. I'm Ray Pucci and as president of the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce, I am honored to work with the most optimistic and energized people that I know. Business leaders, business managers, their staffs all throughout the Catskill Mountain and the Delaware County region. And together, together, we help move our local economy forward. The chamber believes that prosperous businesses support prosperous communities. And in these days, let me amend that a little bit. The chamber believes that healthy communities begin with healthy businesses. We support our entrepreneurs by advocating for public policies that create an environment in which private enterprise may thrive. We promote our region as a great place to visit, to live, to learn, to work, and to play. We create programs that enhance our communities and improve our quality of life. We believe in collaboration and we believe that the surest way to success is a partnership among business, government, community groups and education that is mutually beneficial and based in respect, trust and honesty. Finally, the chamber believes in the potential of this region, our residents, our institutions and all who call this special place home or who have an interest in our collective success. Pretty simple folks, but that's the message and the purpose of this program, Catskills Commerce here on WIOX Community Radio, to help spread the news that we remain a vibrant and diverse place. Well, folks, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I'm sorry I wasn't able to, to join you on, on New Year's Day a couple of weeks ago for the last program. Um, Quite frankly, I, I wimped out a little bit. The forecast was calling for, as you may remember a couple of weeks ago, some snow and sleet and ice and rain and tigers and bears, oh my. Um, and I just kind of wimped out a little bit on, on coming over a couple of the hills uh, to make it to uh, the studios here in, in Roxbury. Um, and I thank those folks who, uh, Play some music who uh, were able to cover for me on the on the first. But here we are. Hopefully I'm the last person to welcome you and wish you a happy new year here in 2021. I know we all hope that it's a whole lot better than what 2020 looked like. Um, and from a business perspective, it's been a it's been a rough, it's been a pretty rough, rough 12, well, nine months anyway. And over the last couple of weeks, I'm sure, I hope that you all have been paying attention to, um, well, paying attention to some of the, the, the recovery efforts that are underway, uh, particularly in our nation's capital for, for uh, small businesses. And, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that uh, this afternoon I have joining me um, a couple of representatives from the uh, small, from the United States Small Business Administration, uh, Howard Garrity and Jeff Boyce. Uh, Howard has been a friend for the last few years, and I have a feeling Jeff is going to be my new best friend, at least uh, along with Howard at 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 SBA. Uh, and they're going to talk a, a bit about what well, we're all going to talk about. Uh, some of the programs, what SBA does, some of the programs that they, they offer, um, ways that they can be a partner in our uh, collective recovery. Uh, and they're, they're joining me via Zoom this afternoon. Uh, for those of you who, um, well, I, I tried to make this work. So it went on MTC uh, cable uh, channel 20. Obviously, I did not something right, so um, we're not going with video this afternoon. Which um, you know, I got a great face for for audio for radio, as as my good friend Terry Doyle uh, here used to say. But um, we will be rebroadcasting today's 
program on the Delaware County Chamber's uh, YouTube channel and, and some, other, uh, some other mechanisms that, that we have uh, in an effort to get this very important information uh, out, to, out to everybody. So Howard Garrity, Jeff Boyce, thank you both for joining me this afternoon on, on Catskills Commerce. You're both with the uh, Small Business Administration and, you know, guys, I, I think we've all heard of Small Business Administration. We all heard, we have all heard of SBA, uh, though I'm not always sure that everybody really knows what SBA, um, what SBA does. So, Howard, why don't you kick that off for us? Tell us. Uh, you know, tell us a bit of, of what SBA does. Well, let me give you uh, a little bit of history about, uh, you know, the Syracuse uh, SBA uh, upstate New York district office. Um, we actually serve 34 counties in uh, New York state. Um, if you do the math, I think that's uh, just about over half the counties in New York state. Uh, we've got offices in uh, Syracuse. That's our district office. Um, we've got an office in uh, Albany. Uh, Jeff and his staff uh, had that office up. And uh, I'm down in the uh, Elmira, New York area. So what we do, we help small businesses uh, start, we help them grow, and we help them succeed. Um, we're proud to say that we have an extensive network of resource partners that we work with. I'll just name a few of those, Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got our small business development centers, our square chapters, our women's uh, business centers, and our veterans business outreach centers. And of course, we also work with our network of lending partners, uh, our chambers uh, of commerce, uh, this is a fine example uh, today of what we're doing, working with uh, Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. Um, and, uh, you know, then we've got some economic development organizations that we work with. And uh, we all do this to help upstate New York small businesses at every stage of development. You know, we're very happy and proud to say that we are um, a one-stop shop for small business uh, assistance. So how do we help? Well, I already mentioned uh, Start, Grow and Succeed. So Start, Grow and Succeed would in, uh, include our access to capital uh, program, our contracting programs, our counseling programs that are available through our network of business resource partners. And we've added to that list uh, disaster assistance. And Jeff is gonna give you the rundown of that in, in just a few minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about there. There's a lot to talk about, you know, so I'll be, I'll be uh, very mindful of how much time I take up here, right? Oh, you're, let you're me, doing fine. Uh, let me just name some of the resource partners. I already, I already named Small Business Development Centers, uh, <clears throat> our core chapters, uh, those are Counselors to America's Small Business, our Women's Business Centers. Uh, we're proud to say that we have the Y Center in Syracuse, New York, that we work with. Our Veterans Business Outreach Center, we're happy to have one uh, in our district, uh, actually up in Jeff's neck of the woods up there in Albany. Um, so these are just some of the folks that, that we work with. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, our access to capital. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our microloan program, uh, our 504 loan program. We'll talk about our flagship 7A loan guarantee program that's right. been around longer than I have. Uh, you'll be happy to hear that, right? Uh, <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about eligibility use of proceeds and, you know, some helpful hints before you, uh, before you meet with a lender. So, Let's start off with the uh, 7A flagship loan program. Okay. Um, yeah, so that that is our flagship loan program. And uh, gosh, I think that's really started back in, if I remember correctly, uh, I, I think way back in 1953 when the agency first started. But under that program there, um, we can guarantee loans uh, up to $5 million. Wow. Yeah, quite, quite a 
it covers the gauntlet of small businesses, most of it anyway. Uh, use of proceeds, uh, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Uh, we've got our 504 uh, loan program. That's an economic development program. And, uh, you know, there are like three parties involved to that program with, with that program. There's SBA, uh, certified development company, uh, third party lender, um, bank or credit union. Mm -hmm. uh, those loans can be up to uh, actually um, 5.5 million in some in some cases. And then we've got a microloan program. Uh, those are loans up to 50,000 and they're uh, designed to for, um, you know, our startup businesses, our smaller businesses, minority owned businesses, veteran owned businesses. Uh, these loans are made through a microloan intermediary. In other words, we provide the funds to the intermediary and then they turn around and lend those uh, funds out to the small business community. Uh, average loan size, average uh, microloan uh, size is uh, about $13,000. So it's a great program. We have several in our area and we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a bit about the loan guarantee. We are not direct lenders, we guarantee loans. So a loan guarantee is a uh, percentage of the loan amount. It can be anywhere between uh, 50 to 85%. Um, and that's designed to benefit um, both the small business borrower and the lender. You know, it's kind of a, an insurance policy for the lender, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. The, the benefits um, are twofold uh, to the small business. Uh, it allows business to uh, open uh, or expand. Uh, the benefit uh, to the lender is um, if the business fails, uh, a large portion of their risk has been reduced. So let me give you an example of how this works, all right? So remember, we talked about uh, loan amounts can be up to $5 million. We talked about the guarantee percentage can be anywhere from 50 to 85%. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's just use an example. Uh, let's just say the loan is $100,000 and we guarantee 85% of the loan. The loan fails to repay. The lender submits the request to SBA. Um, we pay the lender eighty-five thousand. So the lender's loss has been reduced to fifteen thousand versus a hundred thousand dollars. So um, one thing that uh, we need to make uh, clear at this time that the small business borrower still, still, still must repay whatever the outstanding loan balance is. So it's a great program. Uh, it's a very healthy program. Um, why would a lender use this program? Well, if you're a bank or credit union and you've got a good customer and that good customer comes in, um, you know, and they meet all the credit requirements, um, you know, the, the, the lender will go ahead and, uh, you know, fund that type of a business. But let's just say that you go into a borrower or you go into the lender and, uh, you know, it might be a situation where, um, you know, it might be newer untested management, uh, might be a shortfall in collateral. Um, maybe there's a shortfall in the equity investment. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you need a longer term than the normally uh, than normally a lender would go on that particular type of credit. And that's where the SBA guarantee can come into play. I always say if they want to make the loan, uh, SBA guarantee will help a lender make a loan that they would like to make, but maybe cannot make under their existing lending policy. Um, and uh, of course, the, the 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 third alternative on that uh, on that scale is, um, you know, maybe the lender just doesn't want to make the loan. Um, so you know, you could end up with a decline or depending on the reasons for the decline, you might want to consider uh, uh, going to another lender and have them taking a look at, at your request. Uh, Ray, if you want to have any questions along the way, just- You're doing me. great, Howard. Ah. Hey, this, is, this is a lot of information that, you know, folks don't, don't generally, you know, business owners don't generally have, um, that they're really not aware of of these type of loan programs. And, 
And I should probably interject one thing. You mentioned you were talking about the 7A lenders and 7A program, and you'd be working with a uh, what we what you call a 7A lender. Um, all I believe now, all of the financial institutions that have a branch here in Delaware County, at least, are indeed approved 7A lenders. Well, that's wonderful. That 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 is really great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and and uh, we do have a lot of resources and we do a lot of things. And, uh, you know, this, this is just one example. I appreciate what you're doing for the small business community, Ray, you know, opening up this opportunity for Jeff and myself to come out here and chat with you and sort of uh, chat with the small business community and I'll let them know what we do, who we are, how we do it. So let me just back up a little bit um, yeah. and talk about the lender uh, microloan program. I already mentioned, right. you up to 50,000, no real estate, Business, businesses have to be small and they have to be for profit and they have to be through one of SBA's intermediaries. One of our, in other words, one of our micro lenders. All right, so we have uh, one statewide micro lender in New York State and that is Pursuit Lending in Albany. Oh, we, also okay. have, yep, we also have four other micro lenders uh, in our district, um, but they're, they have specific counties that they deal with. Okay. Um, but you're gonna find all of this information on our district website, and I'll just stop right here at this point and say, um, you want to sba.gov uh, backslash uh, Syracuse district, it'll take you to our district website. It'll list all the resources that we have available to help you with your small business. It'll list all the resource partners that we deal with, all the different uh, loan guarantee programs. Um, it's, it's just a, a fantastic uh, site. We've got um, so much information there in terms of um, educational. Well, one thing learning program that's really fantastic, all free of charge. Guys, one thing, one thing I want to point out, and, and, and Harry, you're talking about, you know, Syracuse, and, uh, and that sounds so far away, but, you know, it's not. It's just how things are organized. So when, you know, SBA is, is all across the United States um, and, and its territories, uh, and the, uh, the upstate the upstate New York region is just part of that larger network. Uh, and, and that's what serves your, it's your office uh, that serves where we are uh, here in the, in the Catskill Mountains. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you were, uh, you were, if you were up towards the uh, Buffalo, Rochester, Buffalo area, mm -hmm. uh, Canandaigua area, that's part of the uh, Buffalo, New York state. Uh, district. If you're, you know, downstate New York City, Long Island, well, that's New York, uh, uh, New York City district office. Um, you know, all the other counties are pretty much ours. So all told, we actually, uh, I believe um, that we have the last count anyway, 68. Wow. District offices in uh, uh, nationwide. So we're just one of uh, 68. So um, you know, if you're located in some other area outside of New York State, uh, there's an SBA office. Mm -hmm. So um, let me just talk a little bit about uh, the 504 loan program. I won't spend a lot of time on this. Uh, you know, this is like our larger type loans. Um, um, you know, these uh, loans are administered by a third party lender, um, you know, usually a certified uh, development company. Uh, you work with a certified development company. Uh, they coordinate uh, all the documentation that's required, uh, and then uh, they help facilitate the SBA process. So what they'll do, they'll guide the structure and review everything that you submit to them for SBA eligibility. They'll do the underwriting, and then they submit to SBA for approval. Um, so it's SBA funds that are really being involved and, and they're almost the, the pass through, if you will. Well, uh, yeah, the way it works and uh, it would be better if we had some sort of a PowerPoint to just sort of guide everybody through this. But let's just say that uh, there was, uh, let, let's just say we're looking at a, a large project of 
uh, let's use uh, oh, maybe um, a million eight hundred thousand. That's I'll okay. use that. That's easy okay. for me to do in math, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we, a, we have a project that's like somewhere around one point eight million. Yeah. So uh, you know, um, borrowers equity injection. Uh, depending, you know, it's always depending on circumstances, um, but it can be as low as 10%. So borrower okay. would come up with $180,000. The SBA certified development company 504 loan portion would be say 40% of that or $720,000. Got it. And the uh, lender, the bank, um, could come in for uh, say, what would that be? Nine hundred thousand dollars, about fifty percent. About fifty percent of the project, and that, sure. And that equals the um, total project cost of, I believe, about of one point eight. About one point eight, if I figured it right. It, it's a it's a special program. It's for the larger loans. It's for businesses that have already been in business. Um, uh, and it's to fund, uh, you know, the business uh, growth or, you know, business that's in an expansion mode. And it's strictly for long-term fixed asset financing projects. Okay. okay. Buildings, um, equipment. Real estate, machinery equipment. It's got to be at least a 10-year uh, useful life. Got it. Um, you know, and, and there are some, some other criteria there. Great. Um, one is uh, job creation and retention. That's one of the requirements. So it, 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 it's really a specialty type program. Um, anybody has any questions on, you know, what I'm chatting about, um, you know, they can feel free to reach out to me um, or Jeff. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give emails and phone we'll numbers and things like that toward the end yeah, of the program yeah, for can, both of they, you. They can email us. Um, so I, can we go... Back, Howard, I don't want to take you too much off track, but let's let's revisit that micro loan because I think that's something that's going to be of great interest to a lot of the business owners who are who are listening. You said that can be up to fifty thousand dollars, no real estate involved. Um, well, we can't make loans for real estate. You know, okay. it's for working capital, inventory, furniture, fixtures, machinery, and equipment. The term is up to six years, right? It's a six-year okay. term. Um, like I said, the average loan size is about thirteen thousand dollars. That's that you know, and for a lot of businesses, um, and and let's talk specific about companies that are located here in the in the Catsco region. A lot of our uh, the the revenue for a lot of our businesses tends to be uh, a little bit more, let's say, seasonal, um, and we're coming into, well, we're in the midst of, uh, for a lot of business, a very lean uh, revenue period for the next next couple, three months, perhaps. Um, so <clears throat> they, if they're looking at one of those micro loans uh, to kind of bridge them through that period, uh, they need to be talking with, with you all uh, or one of your 7A lenders because that's moving through the 7A program. Well, microloan lenders are... Um, or pursuit, rather. That's right. You said pursuit. Well, it could be pursuit. You know, it depends on the on the area. Pursuit sure. is nationwide. We have, what, I think four other microloan lenders in our district. Okay. Um, but usually they limit themselves to, like, specific counties. Yeah, yeah. So probably the best thing to do, if somebody's really interested in microloans and wants to talk about a microloan, would be to have them call either Jeff or I, and we can find out where the business is located and, you know, give them some idea as to you can direct them accordingly. maybe which microloan lender they should be contacting. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Um, are there other things that we need from a high level point of view that we should be talking about with, with SBA that you're doing before we start diving into some of the weeds of uh, the recovery program? Well, uh, you know, I've got a couple other things that I could Good. talk about. Um, Great. Let me just talk about um, our SBA Express Loan Program. All right. Okay. And yep. those loans are up to 350000 The maximum guarantee is 50%. Uh, there are term loans uh, that can be line of credits. Uh, there are flexible terms and conditions. Uh, they can be for startup or existing businesses. Um, you know, uh, the lender makes the decision uh, using uh, our express uh, process. 
Uh, so turnaround time is very quick on those, right? Yep, lenders can make that decision as long as the, you know, the applicant meets uh, SBA's eligibility criteria and um, the, the lender is satisfied with all of the other credit requirements, they have the authority to, you know, approve that loan. So it's a very quick, very quick turnaround. So you say lender, you're talking again, someone of lender. That would be a 7A express lender. This, okay. Is that the mm -hmm. same as the 7A lenders or not necessarily? Well, these are express lenders, you know, and they receive special okay. trade. We go around, keep them up to speed on everything, like we do all of our lending partners. Um, okay. You know, you could find out who our SBA express lenders are by going on to our Syracuse District website or. Mm -hmm. Another easy way would be to either call, probably call me and I can tell you who okay. they are. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, one nice thing under SBA Express, you know, if, if you are a veteran owned business under SBA Express, there's Express, I'm sorry, there's no upfront guarantee fee. No upfront guarantee fee. Wow. Well, there are guarantee fees on our loans. Um, I don't like to spend a lot of time talking about guarantee fees because they're based uh -huh. on you know which particular type well program that uh, that a lender uses um, based on the amount of the loan, the percentage of the guarantee. So you know, uh, best thing to do is questions on that. Go to our website or you know call someone in the district office or you know Albany, Elmer, that type of thing. Right. But you know again, if it's an XBA Express loan and it's a entrant owned business. Uh, spouse of a veteran or widow of a veteran, uh, they would qualify for that particular type of credit uh, with no fee. Uh, they must be honorably discharged veterans. Uh, there's some information they need to submit to the lender, like a copy of DD-214 and some mm -hmm. other documents. Mm -hmm. uh, but these loans are, uh, you know, that's a delegated process for all of our 7A uh, uh, SBA Express lenders, and like I mentioned earlier, the big benefit is the expedited process and a whole lot less uh, paperwork. Uh, I could talk about ineligible business types and eligible business types, but that, you know, if you're for profit, <laughs> you know, I can go into that. <laughs> But what the message here is that there's, there's an abundance yeah. of, of resources that are available. Business. Yeah, it can be retail, hotel, manufacturing, service, construction, startup, uh, franchises if they meet certain SBA guidelines, um, you know, those types of things. Ineligible, well, you know, businesses which re restrict uh, patronage, uh, an example would be, uh, you know, men's only or women's only uh, health club, not-for-profit organizations. Um, um, you know, and there are a couple other examples I can give you, but I think I'm really pushing that's the envelope great. here no, as far as great. as far as time is concerned. No, yeah, uh, we're doing we're we're fine. Okay, um, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll uh, I'll get off and turn it over to Jeff because I'm sure this is what your audience wants to hear. I'll, well, no, you know, I think I think you know what you're talking about is absolutely <laughs> critical information, and it, it's it's. You know, may, what Jeff is going to talk about may be a little bit more timely, given um, those current circumstances. But certainly, very you know, <laughs> knowing, yeah, but knowing, you know, what's available through through the Small Business Administration of the United States is is absolutely critical information. And we're and, going to get and, to Jeff. Yeah, Ray, it's, can I just jump in? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. So you know, before we pass the baton, Howard. You did a really amazing job of talking about all of our different products. Do you want to also just touch briefly on resources? And what I mean by that is, you know, our resource partners like SCORE and SBDC. Do you want to just kind of remind folks of, of that really important piece of what we offer? Uh, yes. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, SCORE and I mentioned Small Business Development Centers, um, you know, a little bit earlier, but um, and these are fantastic groups. Uh, you know, if I get somebody that calls me and, you know, we talk about their business, their business 
you know, what they're going to do. If it's a new business, especially, you know, the first thing I ask them, do you have a business plan? And usually the answer is what's that? 99% of the time, even <laughs> it's uh, well, no. <laughs> and, I've heard uh, of one, but I have, I don't have one. Yeah. We got it up here, you know? So that's when, you know, we bring the resources of, uh, you know, either our score chapters or our small business development centers or women's business centers, uh, or maybe even our Veterans Business Outreach Center, if it's a veteran, into play because these folks can help you. They can help you with writing a business plan. They can help you with market analysis. They can help you with financial projections. They can help you with your funding request. Uh, they can help you with the legal requirements and all those other things that you need to know about before you go in and sit down with your lender. And uh, so I encourage everybody to take advantage of you know, one of these resources that I that I I, I just mentioned, we have uh, five score chapters in our district, and I believe that we have ten small business development center offices in our district, um, and one veterans business outreach center, which I already mentioned, which is located in Albany, New York. But these are tremendous resources. Um, you know. If you're going to go in before you go in and sit down with your lender, and if you intend to have a productive discussion, you better have, for lack of a better terms, all your ducks in a row. You really need to be prepared. Yep. It's only going to enhance your chances of walking away with, hopefully, um, an approval of your request, either with or without the SB loan guarantee. It's just these are just resources are tremendously important, not only to us, but the small business community. Uh, services are free and confidential, so you can't beat the price. And I should interject here uh, that uh, we have two small business development centers that service uh, Delaware County. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a service within the State University of New York and the center uh, from Binghamton kind of serves the western part of the county and, and Ulster Community College or SUNY Ulster, uh, the eastern part of the county. But I should interject in this as, as, as well and let folks know that uh, the Delaware County Chamber along with uh, some of our other regional partners like the uh, DCMO BOCES uh, is uh, offering uh, one program, well, several programs, um, including promoting those that are offered through SBDC and SCORE and some of our other regional partners. But starting March 1st, uh, we are along with the, uh, the chamber, along with DCMO BOCES is hosting a four week, uh, four weeks to launch class that will meet uh, both in person, I think at this point, if you wish, uh, but certainly in a virtual environment, environment uh, two evenings a week, Monday and Wednesday evenings from six until eight uh, for those uh, four weeks, those eight sessions. And at the end of those uh, four weeks, participants will indeed have at least the, the, the basics, the rudimentary parts of a business plan uh, put in place. And, and that's again, thanks to that partnership between the Delaware County Chamber, DCMO BOCES, and our friends at Growth Wheel International, uh, a Delaware County based company that is really uh, one of the premier uh, trainers of business planning professionals. They, they train uh, folks who are working with folks preparing business plans all across the, the country. You're listening, by the way, to uh, WIOX Community Radio. We remain live and local here in the Catskill Mountains at 91.3 FM. We are on MTC Cable Channel 20. We're everywhere at w, um, WIOXradio.org, where if you kind of like what you hear, you can donate as well as support the, the radio station. And you can also get WIOX on any smart device through uh, Rock... Um, things like radio FM, uh, dot FM app, or you can just tell that little round device that's sitting on your bookshelf, Alexa, play WIOX. Last time I did that, my wife told me that all of a sudden it, it responded and, and 
started playing WIOX again, which was kind of fun. Um, Jeff, we're going to talk about some of the recovery efforts, but let's talk a little bit about weather recovery. It's kind of a gloomy day here in, in, in Roxbury, at least. Uh, looking at the weather forecast for today, we got a slight chance of rain and uh, some patchy fog during the day tonight, some rain coming in and maybe a little bit of snow overnight. Highs this afternoon going up to 43 degrees and overnight tonight, lows going down to about 37 degrees. So at above freezing, what that means is maybe we all have a chance of seeing what's underneath the snow in our driveway uh, by tomorrow sometime. For tomorrow, we got a chance of rain with highs tomorrow going up to According to the National Weather Service, and don't blame me if this doesn't happen, up to 44 degrees. You know what it means when it's January and it's it's 40 degrees here in the Catskills, it means it's time to go wash your car. Overnight lows on Saturday going down to 29 degrees. And for Sunday, we're looking at highs on Sunday afternoon, go bills, um, of 41 degrees uh, with lows going down to again going down into the upper upper 20s and for those of you who are sticking around for the uh, Martin Luther King holiday on Monday we're looking at highs on Monday under partly sunny skies it's always nice in January when we can use the word sunny um, it is going to be the high on, on Monday it looks like it's going to be close to 40 degrees gentlemen there's like SBA is, is, is um, you know, Howard, you mentioned 68 offices across the country or 68 regions, district offices are, are across the country, um, helping this small, primarily small businesses uh, with a lot of their access to, to capital needs and working in partnership with groups like the Delaware County Chamber, which I appreciate, and a lot of others to deliver those services um, right now, the need for um, the need for that access to capital is critical for a lot of our small businesses. And Congress uh, just uh, earlier this month, I guess, it was the end of la uh, end of Feb end of December, I should say, um, passed a new round of of uh, financial support, which the gov uh, which the president signed, uh, and the the rules have been promulgated, um, the money has been allocated. Uh, now we're starting on Tuesday, we get <laughs> the applications and folks can start talking to their local lenders about the uh, paycheck, yeah, paycheck uh, protection program uh, and the paycheck protection program loans. <clears throat> Jeff, why don't we, Let's let's start there. What um, what's going to happen on Tuesday with the this PPP? Well, Ray, thank you again for hosting us. It's great to be with you. And as you said in the beginning, uh, I'm Jeff Boyce. I'm the Upstate New York branch manager with the SBA. And uh, yeah, it's been a big week for us. A very exciting week. We've had an awful lot of those over the past several months. Uh, our small agency has really been kind of thrust to the forefront here to administer all of this economic assistance. Uh, and so, as you mentioned, uh, very exciting that the Paycheck Protection Program uh, was authorized to, to open back up again uh, and was funded uh, pretty significantly. So uh, the program actually reopened and began this week. Uh, it began on Monday in kind of a, a small measured planful way uh, so starting this Monday, the 11th, uh, we opened the program uh, just to take applications, loan applications from what we call CFIs, Community Financial Institutions. And these are some of the groups that Howard was just talking about earlier. So uh, our microloan intermediaries, uh, our minority deposit institutions, certified development companies, and CDFIs, Community Development Financial Institutions. We opened the program first and foremost to those types of lenders because they specifically serve women, minority, veteran, uh, entrepreneurs, and the very smallest businesses. Uh, you know, Ray, there was a lot of criticism from the first round of the PPP 
the big companies got in there fast and they got big loans and they used up the money. Um, and there's, you know, the numbers at the end of the day don't necessarily bear that out. But nonetheless, as this program is reopening, our agency has made specific efforts to continue to give uh, extra opportunities to these small entrepreneurs. So that's what we did. Uh, the program opened Monday for those folks and those uh, uh, lenders first, but as you mentioned, uh, after the Martin Luther King holiday on Monday, on Tuesday, the program opens up for all SBA lenders. So um, all eligible applicants will be able to go to any SBA lender uh, and submit their application for a Paycheck Protection Program loan. So what I'd love to do is kind of run you through some of the basics of PPP so folks uh, will have a sense of, of what it's all about. That sounds uh, great. Yeah. As you mentioned, uh, the program was refunded. Uh, let's, let's start right there. Uh, Congress allocated $285 billion. That's with a B. That's with a B, my friends. That is just a mind-boggling amount of money. And so what we believe is with that allocation, uh, and with the, the refined eligibility, which is a little bit more targeted and focused, we will be directing funds to those who need it most. And we believe the amount of money is adequate. So, you know, while there was that really uh, kind of a big rush when the program opened previously, uh, we urge patience and we think that there'll be sufficient funds uh, for all those who need it. Um, I also want to mention too that our agency has put in some additional front end compliance checks. So when a borrower applies to their lender, and not to us, but to one of our authorized lenders, and when the lender submits that application to the SBA, uh, this time around there will be a little bit of a lag, uh, but that's okay. Uh, that's to allow those additional compliance checks to occur. Uh, and it does not mean that there's a problem necessarily or that there's any lack of funding. Uh, it's normal and to be expected. So I just want to mention that. Um, so Paycheck Protection Program, um, you know, I think it's important to, to kind of remind folks the basic elements of the program because they remain the same. Uh, and as I said before, this is a loan that is meant to be forgiven, right? So you're tapping these funds by taking out a loan through one of our banks. Uh, Credit Union is one of our lenders uh, and the loan has some terms. Uh, so the interest rate is 1%. That's incredibly low. Uh, the term of the loan, the duration is five years. So it's a short-term loan. Uh, and payments are deferred for 10 months in the hopes that you will borrow the money, use the money, and apply for forgiveness. And the entire thing will be basically wiped off the books. That is the goal. Um, I'll also mention that there are no fees. There's no collateral required. Uh, and there's no personal guarantee. Uh, and Whoops, I'm not quite sure what happened. Jeff, you just kind of froze up on me there for him. Howard, do you want to pick up where Jeff was frozen? Jeff seems to be frozen right now. He's in like a internet limbo or something. How are you able to hear me? I think we just lost, I think we just lost Jeff, Jeff voice, but we're gonna hopefully he'll come back in and hear in just a moment. Um, let me pick up on a couple of things that, that Jeff started talking about. And, and Howard, you jump on as, as, as well. Um, Jeff started talking about the, 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 the PPP program. Oh, let's see. You Jeff, you're back. Yes, I'm sorry. I might, we just we kind of went into that uh, internet limbo there for a little bit. Yeah, that was bizarre. I was talking away, and the next thing you know, you popped off my screen. But I'm back. Can you hear me? Well, you 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 sound a little garbled, but but you are back, and that's what counts. 
so you, Jeff, you just started talking about the uh, about the PPP that there there's uh, no collateral, there's no fees, uh, there's it's a ten month uh, period to uh, that it was it's a loan that that's designed to be forgiven. So where do we pick up from there? That's exactly right. Can you hear me okay now? You sound great. Oh, fantastic. All right. So apologize for that. So uh, yeah. So. Um, those are the terms. It's meant to be forgiven. Um, and frankly, you can be a small business uh, or some other eligible organizations uh, of any size, right? You could be the smallest of small businesses, uh, a one person sole proprietor, yeah. or you could be a small business with up to 500 employees. Uh, so I want to just mention that. Um, I also want to point out that the ways in which you can use the funds have been expanded. Uh, so as before, the primary focus is on paychecks, right? Is on basically maintaining payroll. So 60% or more of the funds that you receive through this forgivable loan have to be used to cover payroll. 40% or less uh, continue to have to be used for things like rent, utilities, and mortgage interest. Uh, but importantly, some of those other categories have been expanded to include operating expenditures, uh, worker protection expenditures, supplier costs and property damage costs. Mm -hmm. So that 60-40 split is still there, um, but uh, you've got some additional ways to spend the money. So that's the program still in its essence. Let's talk about some new concepts that the Economic Aid Act introduced when it reauthorized PPP. Uh, we now talk about things called a first draw or a second draw loan. What does that mean? Well, um, Starting next Tuesday, you can apply for both again through any of our SBA authorized lenders. And if you never got a PPP before, for whatever reason, you didn't need it, but now you do, a time ran out, whatever, this is your chance to apply again for the first time. Uh, and if you do that, you're considered a first draw PPP borrower. Conversely, if you got money before, and you have fully expended those funds and you meet the revised eligibility, you can apply again and get a second PPP, a second forgivable loan. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but that's what those terms mean, first and second draw. Okay. So if you're going to apply for a first draw loan, um, again, you go to your lender. Uh, some good news here, though, is that the time period in which you have to expend those funds has been um, expanded or, or sort of given additional flexibility. You now have any time between eight and 24 weeks after receiving the funds to use them. Uh, it used to be you had to pick one of those time periods. Now it's either. Um, so you've got some additional flexibility there. Um, Jeff, so, I just want to clarify one point that you just yeah. made. Um, so the period of that you can account for forgiveness, if you will, is between eight and 24 weeks, Correct. but it is after receipt of funds. It's not from time of application. It's time of receipt of funds. That's exactly right. Let's talk Great. about the steps real quick. So you go to a bank or credit union, you apply for PPP. They take your application, they submit it to the SBA. We do our compliance checks. We reserve the funds, give it a number, and we tell the lender, yes, go and make that loan to Ray in that amount. Mm -hmm. They then, with that approval, will within, you know, maybe the same day, fairly immediately disperse the funds to you, the borrower. Upon disbursement, that so-called covered period begins, that time in which you are supposed to immediately begin to essentially book costs against those monies, spend those funds. And that covered period, that time of expenditure, is anywhere from eight all the way up to 24 weeks. Right. Yeah. OK, so we talked about the difference between a first draw and a second draw loan. Let's yeah. just go back and remind folks of the expanded eligibility. So I said it's anything from a sole proprietor up to somebody with 500 employees. This most recent legislation added some other eligible groups. And Ray, you'll be interested in these. Uh, they include some things like housing cooperatives. Uh, that's a little unusual. Um, destination marketing organizations. We have lots of those throughout the state. That's important. Um, 
501c6 organizations. Those are essentially chambers of commerce and other kind of quasi-economic development groups. They are now eligible. And finally, certain news organizations. So what, what, what kind of organizations? News organizations. Oh, news organizations. Okay. So given that you're in the chamber business and in the radio business, uh, some of those certainly should, should, should be of interest to you. Um, so that's great. So there are more types of entities that can apply for either first or second draw PPP. Um, so the second draw eligibility is a little bit more targeted or focused. So instead of having as many as 500 employees, that bar is lowered. You can only have up to 300 employees, which is still pretty big. Okay. And in addition, you must demonstrate a 25% reduction in your gross receipts by comparing a quarter from 2019 to 2020. So again, it's more targeted. You've gotta be a smaller, small business and you've gotta be able to demonstrate that downturn in your revenue, which I'm sure many firms can do. Um, if you meet those requirements, you can apply for a second PPP loan. So that's good, but it gets better, right? So um, the loan amount is still calculated as it was before on 2.5 times your average monthly payroll. Unless for a second draw PPP, if you are what's known as an accommodation or food service sector business, um, basically in the hospitality, tourism, that type of business, what's also known as a NAICS code 72 firm. If you are, then the good news is your PPP loan is based on 3.5 times your average monthly payroll up to a cap of $2 million. So again, it's giving more assistance, a bigger forgivable loan to those types of businesses because of course, they've been some of the most significantly impacted because of the shutdown. So hopefully that you know comes as good news to your listeners, that's helpful. Um, that's tremendous news. That's better than good news. I, I think it is. I really think it is. Um, I'll tell you that most of the forgiveness provisions, you know, remain the same. Uh, again, after you spent the funds, uh, you go back to the bank, uh, you provide paperwork and documentation to show mm -hmm. that you use the monies in an eligible way. Uh, they take that in and, and that's how the, the forgiveness is processed. Uh, so that's, uh, that remains pretty much the same. So, you know, folks are listening to all this and they're thinking, well, what should I do? It doesn't start until Tuesday. Um, the best thing folks can be doing right now is kind of getting their act together, thinking about where they fit. Are they a first draw or a second draw? Thinking about how to calculate their PPP amount, right? What type of business are they? What is their average monthly payroll? And getting the documentation together so that they're ready to go to their lender next week and say, here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm either coming to you for the first time or I'm back and I qualify for a second one and I want to apply. Um, there are sample yeah. applications on our website they can look at uh, and most lenders will use an online portal to take that information. Jeff, I want to talk just for a moment about that average monthly payroll and how business owners can calculate that. Uh, in 20, obviously, um, that average monthly payroll was uh, was something really something of a moving target. Uh, so should business owners be looking at their say their their 990 form, um, their their Schedule C, whatever from you know their 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 2019 uh, tax records and seeing what that average monthly payroll looks like or what their total payroll looks like, which then they can divide by 12. That's exactly right. So if, if yours is a business that has employees, then you have payroll. Uh, and so that's where you start. That's where you focus. And so for all these calculations, you know, get with your accountant, your advisor, or as Howard mentioned, uh, an SBDC counselor, a sport counselor, uh -huh. expert at calculating this. But it is both payroll, right, the salaries, and the benefit costs. So the cost to you as an employer to provide uh, health insurance, lead time, all of those things can be factored in as well, which helps to increase that. Great. Uh, you know, 
the, all this information, gentlemen, has been incredibly helpful. And, and uh, you're going to be coming back on, I hope, in a, another couple of months. We can do a little update on all this. But one of the programs, Jeff, I'd like you just to touch on, you know, you've been giving us nothing but I, I think you've been giving listeners nothing but good news over these last uh, these last 20 some minutes. Um, the I want to touch on the idle. Uh, the, the economic injury disaster loan that a lot of businesses uh, applied for uh, back in March, April, May, whenever, whenever that window opened. And Idle opened, um, was unveiled back then with this idea of, a, um, of an advance on the, on, the, on the loan amount. And initially, um, it was, well, it was, it's here's $10,000 ad, advance that's, uh, that's going to be forgiven. Um, and then we discovered, well, it's, it's a, based on the employee count and it's $1,000 per, per employee. Uh, this recent legislation kind of changed some of that interpretation as, as well. Can you tell us, tell us about that? I sure can, and I have more good news for you, right? So EIDL stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, this is a, you know, a program that SBA has had for many, many years. It typically comes into play when there's a flood, a fire, an earthquake. But here with the coronavirus disaster, uh, we were able to, do, to really focus on that and say that the economic impact of that was like a natural disaster. Every state is a disaster zone. And so that's the first thing we came out with. And so when you apply for idle which you can still do to this day and through uh, the rest of this calendar year you are applying for a low interest long-term working capital loan uh, that's designed to give you approximately six months of working capital so different than ppp which is an infusion hopefully to maintain payroll idle is all about letting you hold on and power and make a plan to get out of the disaster and ray as you mentioned um, an initial enhancement of the CARES Act was this idle emergency advance. It's kind of an added feature that was bolted onto this core loan program that provided this small additional cash grant uh, of basically $1,000 per employee. Um, that was good. It was helpful. Uh, one of the challenging thing or things was that if you got that money, it got deducted from your PPP total forgiveness. Good news, good news. Um, so with the most recent legislation, idle advance funds are no longer required to be deducted from PPP forgiveness. So if it was, you're going to get that money back. Additional good news is that if you got less than that full $10,000, uh, the most recent uh, legislation that was passed allocated an additional $20 billion with a B to fund the idle emergency advance cash grant. And the way that's going to be dispersed is to first take care of two priority groups. Group number one are those folks that did not get the full $10,000 and they will through some automated mechanisms and through some direct contact from our agency. Priority group number two uh, are folks that applied after that money ran out. They applied last year, they got an idle loan or not, but they got no cash grant, they are also going to be contacted by us through an automated method and get that $10,000. If after taking care of all those folks, there might still be some of that 20 billion left, then I suspect we will design a feature to sort of reopen that and, and help others. But yes, more money, good news, everyone should be able to achieve that 10K grant. You just, you just became, you guys just became the best friends of all the business owners here in Delaware County. Thank you for all that great, great news, um, and and terrific and really solid, accurate information, guys. If, if folks want to get in contact with um, either you, you directly or uh, SBA, how can they do that? Well, so as Howard mentioned, the, you know, the best information on all of our programs, both what Howard described and what I've talked about disaster related uh, is on our website, sba.gov. Uh, and if you do sba.gov backslash PPP, 
that will take you to a page with nothing but information on that program. Um, it's been significantly updated just in the past week. So that's what I would recommend, number one. And number two, I'm glad to give out my email. It's Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y dot voice, B-O-Y-C-E at S-B-A dot G-O-V. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Howard, what do you want to offer? Sure thing. Uh, so first part of my name is easy, Howard dot Garrity, G-A-R-R-I-T-Y at SBA.go. Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks for, for keeping us and keeping us informed. Uh, thank you for the partnership. And uh, folks, you've been listening to Jeffrey Boyce and Howard Garrity, both with the US Small Business Administration, uh, delivering some really good, good news. And if you can, you can see that, yes, go to the SBA website at sba.gov, uh, get more information, find out what services are available to help your businesses through all this. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, and folks, thank you for, for uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to us here at WIOX Community Radio. Coming up next is a special edition of uh, with Afternoon with Sunny, and uh, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks with a new edition of Catskills Commerce.